As we move forward in Middlesex by Jeffrey Eugenides, Cal begins to open up about his hermaphrodism and how it affects his daily life. On page 106, he compares his life's journey of reconciling his female past and male future to the process Berlin has gone through since post-Cold War reunification, known in German as Einheit. As a member of the Foreign Service, Cal has spent his adult life moving from one country to another. He has never felt the need to settle down in one place because he has never felt fully comfortable in his own skin. But in Berlin, Cal begins to understand that he is not alone in his struggle to become whole. Like Berlin, Cal is working to make two disparate pieces of himself whole. He starts to understand that hermaphrodites are people like everybody else, something that he has struggled with in the past. Cal, like everyone else, struggles with his identity, but he is learning that life is a never-ending process of finding oneself, and in that he begins to feel more comfortable and more ready to settle down. On page 144, Desdemona is finding out her own self-identity and how it differs from the identity others have for her. Responding to an advertisement for silk workers, Desdemona finds herself being interrogated by women working for the Nation of Islam. These women question her whiteness, whether she is Greek or Turkish, and hoping to find an excuse to hire her. There's these women's spiritual leader, Minister Fard, has warned these women, quote, they can't rely on no white men no more, got to do for oneself. These words are a revelation for Desdemona. She has spent too much of her life yielding to the decisions of the men in her life. She loves Lefty, but finding an employment on her own gives her independence that she has not had since tending to the silkworms back home. On page 217, Cal is sitting with his love interest, Julie Kikichu. Cal has not told Julie that he is intersex. He always has trouble finding the right time in a growing relationship to reveal his secret. But at the same time, Cal recognizes that Julie is a good match for him. She believes, quote, beauty is always freakish, and she has had experience dating queer men before. Five times before, she has dated a man right before he has come out as gay. This, in a weird way, comforts Cal. Cal has never questioned his attraction to women, but finding a partner that will accept him for who he is feels like a daunting task. Julie appears to be the type of woman who could do just that, accept Cal for both who he is and who he was. For Cal to find love in this life, not only will he have to accept where he's come from, but his partner will also have to fall in love with both Cal and Calipoli and accept both of them for who they are.